Hello and welcome to the show. I'm here on Kerbal Space Program with a challenge. I'm going to be attempting to get a car to another planet and then successfully roll it. It's, um, yeah, rather the, the rolling bit, perhaps not so difficult. The getting the car to another planet bit, that's quite a challenge. Now, for those of you that watch my uh, Kerbal Space Program stream, I attempted to get a car to the Mun, and I successfully got it there and landed it. We're going to be using the same vehicle. I should just quickly show off the other uh, little car that I came up with. This is using the, uh, the Rovers and Roadsters mod. It basically gives you a lot more bits to play around with when it comes to uh, space cars, effectively. It's a very, very cool mod. I'll put the link to the mods I've used in the description so you can download them, try them yourself. Here is the car uh, that we're going to going to be using. It's, uh, well, space cars tend to be quite big in Kerbal. Admittedly, I could perhaps shave off one of the squares. I kind of quite like the way it looks. The difficulty with them is that they are quite large and quite heavy, so you've got to try and lug around all this, all this great big dead weight. Uh, the car itself... Uh, yeah, fairly simple. We've got some some moon tires, some moon suspension, kind of a sporty vehicle. I'm pretty pleased with the way that it the way that it looks. We have, of course, got a spoiler at the back as well because every every car of mine has to have some silly spoilers. We've got some batteries, some solar panels, and uh, and so on. I've got some headlights. They were there just in case I landed on the wrong side. No, no, in my piloting, there was a good chance I would land it on the wrong side of the moon and it would be in darkness. So we've got some headlights, and uh, yeah, it's it's all a, a functioning car. We'll just launch this quickly and. Uh, Show that, show, that it, show that it all works. It's not the world's fastest vehicle, I will be honest. Uh, slight difficulties with it is you have to get it into it from one side. Whoops, Jebediah fell over. Uh, you have to get at it from this side, the other side doesn't work, uh, which often means you have to end up kind of just jumping and press B, and if you time it right, you climb in it. If you time it wrong, the car's going to run Jebediah over. Nope, car. I should have probably put the brakes on. There we go. Now we're in the car. We can decouple it from the cockpit, focus the view on the car, and voila! We have a vehicle. It's not the world's fastest car. It'll do about 20 metres a second. Uh, I think it's 20, 20, 21 maybe on Earth. We've got up to 26 on the moon going downhill. Um, yeah, it's not the fastest car, but, but it works. As far as the rolling over bit goes, well, once we get it above 18 metres a second, we steer, and it'll go on two wheels. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's not particularly hard to... Uh, <laughs> to roll it over. Now I didn't roll it over there because there's one more important thing that I was going to show you. Um, the solar panels. Now this is all powered by electricity. We've got some big old batteries on the side of the vehicle. Holds quite a lot of charge to begin with. Now I put these solar panels so that you know once we've landed it we can keep topping it up with energy. A good plan. And it certainly worked when I built this car initially. Now, when driving it around on the moon, we haven't got atmosphere to worry about. The car's fine driving with the solar panels stuck out and recharging the batteries. Now, we can't retract these, and this is kind of important. I can't now retract these panels. So they're there, gain, gain, gaining some energy, refilling our, refilling our battery. The problem is, is now when I start going forward, I think there must have been an update to Kerbal, because now, when I go forward, the panels fall off when you're dealing with atmosphere. There we go. They've, they've come off at about 10 metres a second. They, they will fall off. Uh, whereas when I built this car, I'm pretty sure they didn't. I'm pretty sure I was driving it around with the panels stuck out and it was fine. Uh, well, there's a slight design flaw with the car that I didn't realise about. And I didn't realise until far too late. I could have changed these sort of ones that, that, that build outwards, if you like, to some more solid ones and put them all over the top of the vehicle and so on. Uh, but I didn't want to now adjust the weight of the car when I'd built a rocket for it. Or when I when I'd, when I got the rocket sorted, I didn't want to adjust stuff on here as I figured that was just going to mess about with weights and so, and so on. So we were only going to have basically one charge of the uh, the electricity because once once it's once it's full I have to drive it and then the panels are going to fall off. So we have one charge and while it does go down fairly quickly it should be enough for what I want to get the uh, the vehicle to do. Now as far as the as far as the rocket goes we can't use the same one that we used to get to the mun for well for a number of reasons. First of all it's not powerful enough and we're going to need quite a lot of power to get us to EVE. That's the goal, the closest planet to Kerbin. Uh, certainly the easiest one to get to as well, I believe. The rocket that got us to the Mun is just, I don't think, powerful enough. But even if it is, there are a couple of other problems. Uh, 
with it. First of all, the method we transported the cars there. Now, to get to the, the Mun, there's no atmosphere, so you can just have the cars dangling off. Once you've got it out of Earth's atmosphere, admittedly not the most aerodynamical of, of designs, this, but it did the job. It got us out of Earth's atmosphere, got us to the Mun and so on. We don't have to worry about these cars when it comes to, to landing there. Uh, but going to EVE, EVE has an atmosphere, so we've got to go through re-entry, and if we just have the cars hanging on, uh, hanging on the side like this, they burn up on re-entry. I did try, I tried, uh, this is slightly modified with parachutes and stuff, but it doesn't, it's not really, not really ideal uh, doing it like this. Uh, so I had to come up with a better system. And for those of you wondering why have I got two cars, there are a couple of reasons. First of all, balance, because if I have one car on that side and nothing there, the things are lopsided, and that's not what you want for a rocket. Uh, and the other reason being is it's kind of nice having a spare in case when I came to drop one of the cars, if I'd messed it up, if I dropped it from too high and it exploded, or I dropped it and it landed upside down or something silly, uh, it was nice having a spare, just in case. But uh, the rocket that is going to take us to the to EVE, the uh, Sprite Kite Mark II, when it gets loaded, here we go, is a monster. <laughs> it is an absolutely crazy contraption. There are, I believe, 30 32 rockets in the first stage. To get it off the ground and into orbit is 32 rockets. Uh, now, admittedly, this is probably not the best designed thing in the world, and if you're here looking for scientific, professional Kerbal playing, you, you've come to the wrong place completely, because I just like lots of rockets. This does the job. It works. And there are many, many rockets on it, so I'm happy. Uh, basically, it's also a little bit idiot-proof because there is so much fuel and so many rockets. It means I can make slight miscalculations, can make little mistakes, and I can still uh, make it work. Admittedly, I can't make very big mistakes, um, but yeah, you can still get away with a little bit more, uh, like with this this many rockets. Also, I actually remembered to put the RCS on the side so that it's slightly easier to turn in space. Still very difficult. Now, as far as the car goes, well, you can see we've not got it hanging on the side anymore. We've got it in this protective shell. I actually figured out how to use these for this, which means we've got this shell around the car. Makes the rocket more aerodynamical for taking off and in getting out of Earth's atmosphere, which is very useful. Uh, so we have that on there. The actual Kerbals themselves are in the little lander can underneath the car. There's two of them crammed into that little tidy, tidy thing. And we have a heat shield, a very large heat shield there, so that this lot here can get into the atmosphere. We've got a, a little engine down here as well. This is kind of the emergency. I've messed up and I need a tiny bit more fuel and thrust to get me into their position <laughs> down there. Um, but yeah, this is the rocket that is hopefully going to uh, to get us to EVE. Slightly better design than the one that got us to the Mun. Oh, we've also got parachutes in here, uh, before I forget. Because we're dealing with an atmosphere, we don't need to worry about having rockets to slow the thing down. We can just use these parachutes and, uh, and that will work. And of course, the car is coupled to the roof of the lander can there. And that's the rocket. It's slightly crazy, maybe not perfectly designed, but um, I, I like the number of rockets we have on this. There's just a scaffolding of uh, <laughs> these these sort of reinforcing braces. Uh, yeah, absolutely ridiculous, but uh, very much me. And it should, at least in theory, should be successful in uh, getting us to EVE. So, on to the launch itself. Certainly uh, a scary time when we are firing up as many rockets as this. Admittedly, the first bit of it is not particularly impressive because there is so much weight to this contraption. It takes a little while to, uh, to get up to speed. Uh, it's, yeah, not quite as impressive a launch as you might expect from... Uh, <laughs> from 32 rockets uh, on this thing but it will it does have an awful awful lot of thrust so it will get going um, eventually now when it comes to doing the gravity turn with the new aerodynamics model on here you can no longer simply get to 10,000 meters and then flip it over and you're all good it will not work it may work with some much better designed rockets perhaps this thing is certainly not stable enough for me to get away with it. It's not actually particularly stable at all. Uh, if I was to redesign this, I would definitely have the outer the outer thrusters a little lower down mounted. I think they're mounted slightly too high, but uh, it works. Uh, it's a tad scary. You can see it's, it's sort of starting to want to tip. You've got to be very, very gentle. You've got to go very, very slowly uh, with the turn. Go too quickly and it will just flip upside down and then you will have a very, very big crash on your hands. So you can see now, I've got to about 11,000 meters. I've pretty much got it where where I want to, where I want it to be. Had a, again, had a tiny, scary boat where it, it looked like it may just go. We were just got about enough speed so that it didn't tip over, and everything worked. Uh, there is an occasional occurrence. I can't figure out why it is. One of the outer fuel tanks explodes. I'm not sure what happens. It doesn't happen every time. It's just sometimes it will decide to explode if it's if it's feeling unhappy. Um, 
Yeah, I haven't changed the design at all. It's, it's just there. <laughs> There's a small chance it may go up. Now, you will notice that uh, the fuel tanks on the outside are starting to get uh, a little bit warm. This isn't something that I'm going to worry about. They don't get warm enough quick enough for them to ever be a problem because I'm going to be getting rid of it very, very shortly. Now, what I tend to do with uh, with this rocket is we wait until it gets to about the 100,000 meter on the, on this particular trajectory and then we're going to release the outer rockets we're going to get rid of them we're going to jettison them with the engines on and then quickly turn off these other main engines uh, then we've got about 114 to 120 20 000 meters depending on quite how, how quickly i do it all and then we can go and get a nice orbit the reason why i'm jettisoning them with their engines on first of all this thing is not easy to maneuver at all it is a horrible thing to try and get turned because it is it's just it's such a great big a uh, great big thing so i get rid of them so we've got a smaller a smaller thing to maneuver uh, around uh, also and the primary reason why i'm doing it is that uh for debris now when we come to fire up this thing I'm, I'm trying to turn it at the moment it takes so long even with the uh, <laughs> RCS out there takes so long to get it turned uh, but yeah the, the, the main reason is because when we go to, to fire up the next stage or whatever I don't want all of these uh, sort of bits of rockets uh, lying around by firing them off with their engines on they saw past I mentally it's quite dangerous having them saw past but they saw past well out of the way and it allows me to, to do my maneuvering and then we come to actually getting the uh, the thing into orbit still got a decent amount of fuel in uh, in these it much easier to start doing maneuvering when you you've got the engines on much much nicer so often i can't if i can never quite get it perfect with the uh, with just the rcs the second you fire it up it's very easy to to get it get it all sorted and now we have to wait till uh, till we get the uh, the thing into into orbit now the fuel tanks admittedly it does look like they are running quite low but because there are so bigger fuel tanks that it's there's still an awful lot of fuel left it should be more than enough to see this thing in orbit now we don't want to waste fuel though. there's no point going for a big wide orbit around earth because we're not going to be staying here or Kerbin, sorry my bad uh, we're not going to be staying here so as soon as we're in a stable orbit sort of around here we'll turn the engines off because there's no need going for a, a bigger orbit and then we have a a sort of little little dribble of fuel left in uh, in these engines that we will use as uh, part of the fuel to escape the orbit. So yeah, basically the, the the whole 32 rocket bit is just to get us safely in orbit. Now the Mun, that's where we've gone before. Where I am aiming is all the way over at Eve. It's a long journey. It's a long journey for uh, for for me to uh, to be attempting. So now we have to uh, try and escape. Basically, we've got to escape uh, Kerbin's gravity and aim for Eve. Now, the way that I kind of... This this gets fiddly. Okay, I'm sure there is a way to calculate this properly. I don't know it, and I try. it's just guesswork. Uh, basically, I keep setting targets and dragging it around until we get to a point that I'm happy with. Now, you'll see that I set, t that set Eve as the target. The reason I do this is as we drag these out, you will see uh, potentially at some point when I get when I get the uh, get the lines right, you will see that it comes up with a sort of target positioning. So over here, uh, that tells you when I am closest to Eve and the other marker shows where Eve will actually be. Now this means that it's easier for me to plot an intercept course. Now if you do things everything perfectly you can actually get an intercept intercept sorry when when you're leaving Kerbin's gravity if you like you can you can plan an intercept properly. I couldn't quite position it right, so what I did is I got the closest I could and then decided I'd, I'd readjust when we got to to that point. The actual the target view that I've got going on there is uh, is really quite useful for, for coming up with this sort of kind of like guesstimating this until you get it right. It's I yes, it's not it's not um it's not ideal, but uh, it's the best that I could do, and it, 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 it's good enough to uh, to work. So again, we begin the humongous manoeuvring around to get our our vessel in position. Now, we only have a little bit of fuel left in these big rockets, but seeing as there's going to be a huge amount of thrust from these, we might as well, we might as well uh, use it all up. And then when we go to fire the, the main rocket, I haven't got any tail fin, I haven't got any, any things that can potentially catch on something and cause an explosion. That's the fear with all the extra stuff is that there's quite a lot of bits to them and I don't want like the, the initial extra boost I don't want them catching on something and causing uh, causing an explosion losing a fuel tank or losing a rocket and so yeah this stage we're fine to uh, to detach it uh, like this 
and now we are on our way. It's a, a fairly hefty burn uh, at this stage, but we've got an awful lot of fuel. This is why we've got so so much stuff uh, on this rocket. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to take it's going to take a fair amount of our fuel to uh, to get out of here, but it's it's all it's all it's all perfectly manageable and is now a lot easier to control as well. <laughs> Once we've got rid of the, uh, the the huge external tanks, much easier to uh, to be maneuvering it around. Now with this sort of stuff, you've got to be very precise with, I say very precise, you can see I've not quite hit my mark, but it's it's, it's good enough uh, on this one. We're still, we're still getting around to where we want our, our target to be. I think I actually did slightly, I got slightly closer with that than the intended one was. Um, so yeah, now comes the uh, the next phase of of trying to to get an intercept. Now again, keeping on with the with the target mode here, you can see when you're getting getting sort of closer by when the when the two arrows start intersecting. So you can see that I've I've, I've positioned my maneuver there much better. And certainly for for my approach of just sort of guesstimating and, and hope you can you can get it right, the the target mode is is very useful. So I see that that one there was pretty close. We bring it back here and we see that it's getting uh, getting quite a lot closer. It just flickers. That means that we have now got our sort of intercept trajectory. We're going to have a... I can't remember what they call it now. Uh, we're going to come close. Encounter. There we go. That's what it's called. On a, on here. We're going to have a, a, an even counter. Now, admittedly, this is uh, quite, a, um, quite a long way. <laughs> Shall we say it is quite a long way to uh, to this maneuver. I get rid of the target mode now. I've got the the path set. It can get quite confusing with the uh, the number of lines that we have that we have going on around here. I'm trying to find the right bit to click on so that we can warp to the uh, to the maneuver. When there's lots of lines, it can occasionally get a little bit fiddly trying to find the one that you. Uh, <laughs> You want to go? I can't quite. I can't quite get it in the right place. Somewhere around there, there is a maneuver line that uh, that we can do. I, I find it eventually. It took a surprisingly long amount of time. Uh, Bob's absolutely loving it at the moment. But <laughs> good old Bob is dancing around as we get ready to uh, to fire up the next thing. Now this one here, perhaps the most important one, important burn, if you like, that you, that, that I do in this mission. Got to make sure you're really precise with this because you're travelling at such speeds and there's such distances, a few meters a second in the wrong direction, and you can end up missing what you were planning on doing. Got to make sure, of course, you keep the rocket on the on the target and everything. This is the this is one of the scary moments, certainly, in the uh, in the flight. Very easy to cock it up here and then miss the planet, and then you're in all sorts of trouble. Fortunately for me, I I get things right. Again, it's not a hundred percent spot on. I'm I'm not a robot, uh, but it's good enough to get us on and encounter course. Now, again, the way that I've ended up doing this mission, the way that the, the things have, have, have sort of happened, is that there's going to be another quite a long wait. I think it's like 100, 100 oh no, 257 days uh, until <laughs> until the manoeuvre that can put me into orbit uh, around EVE. It's, it's, it's not ideal, but at the end of the day, you can fast forward time. So, yeah, it's I'm not 100% exactly perfect with these maneuvers, but it's getting it into positions where I can do stuff, and now again, we begin the whole wriggle the ship around until we get it into a, uh, into a good point. So, yeah, many days have passed as the other uh, Kerbals go flying, uh, flying through space. We're continuing to <laughs> try and wiggle the ship uh, into place. It's not the most maneuverable. Of, uh, of vessels. The other important thing here is fuel. Now we're trying to get ourselves into orbit. Alrighty, so we're going towards the end, really, of our journey. We've still got a good amount of fuel, which I was I was very pleased to see the amount of fuel that uh, that we had left for this final maneuver. And once we are nicely aligned, there we go. We can see the planet for the first time. Bob's now not particularly happy. I don't know what they've been feeding Valentina, but she is incredibly excited to. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it, on earth it is they put in the food for the Kerbals. They go absolutely crazy. Uh, well, she does anyway. Uh, yeah, Bob's not too keen uh, on this. Yeah, once we've got the the the, the rocket lined up, it's uh, still a fairly a fairly sizable burn here. But again, we've got a huge amount of uh, huge fuel tanks. So with the sort of half-ish, less slightly under half of the fuel, wasn't too concerned. It's actually I was surprised while this. Time-wise, this wasn't particularly an efficient way of doing things. Fuel-wise, this was very, very good. Probably the I did a few test flights just to see if I could actually like, see if this rocket was actually capable of getting this sort of distance and so on. And this was definitely by far the most efficient I did uh, on on the fuel-wise. Yeah, actual day-wise, it's just been well over a year uh, for these poor Kerbals uh, 
to get here. But uh, fuel-wise, yeah, it actually worked uh, surprisingly well. So now it comes the job of uh, slowing the rocket, getting it to the uh, the correct position to get it into orbit. Again, you want to be very precise with uh, with this one. Don't want to, the camera gets a little confused as to what on earth to be doing. Uh, yeah, you can't can't really make too many too many mistakes. But I've got, I've got plenty of fuel, so that if I do make a little mistake, I can kind of adjust it ever so slightly. And there we go. Okay, not quite bang on the mark, but it doesn't really bother me because we are now in orbit around Eve. So the next the next path. Well, I I sort of toyed with the idea of trying to get myself into um into a slightly neater orbit. As you can see, we are currently it's kind of, kind of quite a wide orbit. Uh, <laughs> around the planet i was thinking of trying to make it just sort of a sort of a neater one uh well, I, was, I was thinking of sort of waiting until we get down there to um to fire it up but uh, the amount of fuel it's going to take it wasn't really uh it wasn't really worth it so i thought bugger it we'll just we'll just come in for a landing from up here the reason why i was doing that is there's quite a lot of water on this side and i don't i don't want to land in water i haven't come all of this way and land the damn thing in the water that'd be very annoying and uh, there's a big old ocean that i have to be careful to avoid um but I wasn't sure about fuel, so I thought, sod it. We've, we've got the emergency engine, so if it looks like we're about to end in water, we can fire it and hopefully get away. Uh, yeah, that, I figured that this it was the better option. I was just praying we didn't uh, end up with uh, a trajectory into the sea. So again, we come to the, uh, the the final, almost the final approach, if you like, for the uh, for the planet. We didn't have a huge amount of fuel left in the in the main engine, but again, not too fast. I've still got the, the reserve engine. It wasn't a particularly long burn either that we needed to do at, uh, at this stage. Again, trying to make sure you be as precise as possible. This one's slightly less important because we're trying to crash into the planet, so it doesn't matter if I miss it by, by a little bit. If you miss it by a lot, you're in trouble. But um, yeah, still, still trying to crash into the planet. And um, yeah, ev everything was neatly lined up, and we still hadn't used up all of the, the main engine's fuel which was quite nice now one thing that i did mess up that i didn't realize it happened is uh we at some point during this we changed which way we were rotating around the planet now that caught me out because we were kind of traveling to the left as we as we look at it here but in that burn we ended up started traveling to the right so i was expecting to uh to crash down somewhere over here uh, the plan being as we get closer to the planet uh, the atmosphere is going to slow us down. I think it's called aero braking, if I've remembered my wiki reading correctly. Um, it, will, it will slow us down. So we're going to be using that to, to slow us down since, well, we might as well. It doesn't cost us any fuel, etc. It's uh, an easy way for slowing this this vessel down. Uh, now, the the issue that, uh, that I ended up, as I said, thinking I was going the wrong way, slightly scared the crap out of myself when, uh, <laughs> when we were heading in the wrong direction because I was planning to warp to about here and then start worrying about uh, getting the vehicle into orbit and then made small panics as to why were we travelling that way around. Um, but yeah, in the end, doesn't doesn't really matter. A, a huge amount. Either way, we're, co we're coming down on the planet. I was a little concerned that uh, with the with the with the braking we may end up in the sea, which is what I've been trying to avoid. The seas aren't quite as the seas aren't quite as crazy as they are in or oh, they aren't quite as many, shall we say here, as as there are on uh, on Kerbin. So we were yeah, it was it was a bit dodgy for a, for a while. I was a little scared that uh, we may start slowing down too much, but uh, we were we were far enough away. I get a little carried away with the time warping as well, uh, trying to <laughs> trying to judge the height and everything for the um, the entry into the atmosphere. Not that it doesn't matter a huge amount. We ended up just sort of coming in with the entire rocket, uh, which we, we didn't really need to do. As I said, we never ended up using the extra rocket. So I chucked off the bottom bit. I didn't know how, how that bit would deal with temperature, but there's no point keeping it. We don't, we don't need it, so we might as well we might as well get rid of it. Uh, for, for now, I was keeping the emergency bugger it where we had to land in the sea engine. We didn't really, I didn't need to bother particularly. It was just in case something came, if something happened, but uh, we were well clear of the ocean. Now it was just a case of hoping that it would, uh, hoping that it would all slow down. I don't think the engine kind of works as deflecting some heat either. That was another thing I thought, well, bugger it. I'll, I'll keep it on again. We may as well just keep the uh, keep the engine there. And now we're starting to slow down enough so that we are actually going to uh, to, to land on the planet, which is uh, which is what we want to be doing. I'm amazed how yeah how efficient I got there with all the, with with enough fuel for well, enough enough plenty of fuel left over. This was never going to be a, a return mission. I, I'm not clever enough to do that. Jettison the engine when it started getting hot. The car slightly slid out of the. Uh, <laughs> 
the shell briefly. That scared the crap out of me. Don't know why it did that, then went back into position. Uh, it's fine. I got rid of the engine. Once it started heating up, I didn't know how much heat it could take. So rather than risk it exploding and killing everything, just get rid of it. Again, we don't need it. Uh, the heat shield was holding up. The lander can in the middle bit did start getting a bit warm. The protective shell is actually quite good as well at uh, getting through all of this uh, this atmosphere. And while, yes, it does get a bit warm, it all makes it through successfully. We all get through the... Uh the atmosphere nice and nice and cleanly. Bob is none too pleased. Bob is uh, looking rather scared. Valentina is still high as a kite uh, <laughs> over there, thoroughly enjoying uh, her mission to uh, to Eve. And there we go. The uh, I should try to see where the other bits ended up. They ended up quite a, quite a long way. The the lander capsule bit that we wanted to get in here has made it through the uh, the atmosphere. Yeah, the, the lander can itself, not really designed, uh, it says specifically on the thing, not designed for re-entry, but with a combination of heat shield and the protective shell, it works. It gets warm, but it works enough, it, it, it's survivable. Uh, <laughs> getting through here and now it's just a, a case of, of letting the thing descend we don't have to worry about engines and so on for, for slowing us down for the actual landing because we can use parachutes and we have enough of them on on the on the car and on the lander the lander can itself so yeah this bit here there is is not a, not a huge amount to do i was slightly concerned with the, the sort of the, the heat things still still showing up but they're not really it wasn't really changing uh, a huge amount now i made sure to put on the brakes as we release the uh, the protective shell the reason being is something that i learned after doing the uh, the, the moon mission is that uh, if you put on the brakes now while the car is connected to the the lander pod it means that when you stop when when you land if you like the car will have its brakes on so it doesn't go rolling away yeah we may have had that problem when uh, <laughs> when landing on the uh, the moon now one thing with this setup that uh, that i have going sometimes it falls with the car down sometimes it falls with the car sometimes it falls with the car pointing down sometimes it falls with the car pointing up not ideal having it twist over is it not particularly the uh, the scenario that uh, that i want it to be to be doing at this stage it makes it harder for releasing the car because now comes the next kind of scary final stage of the mission, which is why you'll have seen me quick saving as we uh, as we came down here. Because I've now got to release the car. Now, if we release the car too soon, it will drift a long way away from the lander can, and you will have an incredibly long run to go and find it. You release it too late, and the car lands on the lander can, and then you can't get it off, and then that's equally irritating. So you've got to release it at the at, at the right time, literally just before the parachutes are about to open. You want to release the car, let it drift away, then the parachutes will open, and then it will come down. Now, when you're falling upside down, the car can sometimes get caught. On the on the can itself, as is um, you can see where the, where the parachutes are mounted, it can sometimes get caught on them. Now that can work in our favour, as you see here. I was kind of hoping it was going to bounce the car away. The problem is, is it actually starts it swinging, and that that swinging motion brings it back into line just slightly above the can, which is not really what I wanted to achieve with uh, with that particular moment. I timed it perfectly with releasing the car and getting it uh, getting getting the right timing right, but it just sort of snagged on the parachute. Sometimes you can get luckier. I tested this quite a lot coming into coming into earth for the uh, for the landing. Um sometimes you can you can get a lot luckier with that. That was quite uh, quite an unfortunate one. Now we just have to wait for the descent. I put two parachutes on the lander cat. I wasn't quite sure. This thing is not exactly strong. So better to be safe and stick two parachutes on to make sure it gets really slowed down than, uh, than to have other ones. Uh, also, you can potentially cut the parachutes if it was drifting. You can kind of use that ever so slightly to, to maneuver it to try and drift it out of the way. Now, I was really hoping the car was far enough across. I was slightly nervous as we managed to, uh, to touch down on the planet. The car was coming down. Quickly got Valentina out of the thing if the car lands on top of the can it can sometimes block the door and sure enough i'm glad i did get out of it because the car came down and just got caught it was it was it was fractions off but uh yeah little bit unfortunate now i've got to try and get in the car and drive it uh drive it off of here which is uh, we, we start to, to slide down i realize that the gravity is quite a lot more 
on uh, on this particular planet. Yeah, they don't they don't jump particularly high here. I tried pushing it off just using the uh, the Kerbal, but they're not strong enough to uh, to push the to push the car off. A little bit fiddly to try and get in it. You see here by the jumping that there's, there's not <laughs> you don't get very much height from jumping. Uh, yeah, a little bit fiddly getting the uh, getting the car off because I got to try and climb up to the to the cockpit. Try climbing sort of over the wheels up the suspension. That doesn't really work as uh, Valentina trips a little bit, getting off there. So I need to use the spoiler, might as well make it make it useful or something. It's just a combination of mashing jump and F, and then hoping that at some point you find uh, one that works and will let uh, let them climb up. Keep mashing the button away, you'll get there eventually, start climbing up, it flashes B and I jump in the car. Now here comes the, uh, the slightly foolish bit from me. The car is on the top and I can wiggle the thing, but the, the vehicle isn't working. What I hadn't realised at this stage, I thought I'd broken the car or, or or something something else had gone wrong uh, the brakes were brakes were off definitely the the length of the flight had actually drained the battery of the car completely i hadn't realized that so i i loaded the quick save up without thinking about that and um, to uh, to try again cuz bugger me i'm not going through that whole mission again uh, this time round, it, it fell the way that i wanted it to falling this way round is a hell of a lot easier to uh, <laughs> To deal with, I don't know what it is that causes it to to, to to flip around. I think it probably should flip around. I don't know why it is that sometimes we get away with it doing it like this. It's just yeah, it, it happens. Again, re releasing the parachutes. This one means that when I do release, uncouple the car, it'll drift away at uh, a slightly better angle. It's not going to get tangled up with the. Uh, with the, the the parachutes around it, but again, you've got to leave it until the absolute last second. Otherwise, the car will bugger off into the distance, and you <laughs> you will have an incredibly long sprint. I love how excited Valentina is still, but <laughs> Bob is terrified of landing on this strange purple planet. Valentina is loving it. Uh, that time we get the uh, the tires. It's pretty much right. I wouldn't want to have left it much later. Cars drifted a sensible distance away. I think it's just to do with the way that I the way the parachute is placed on the car and the way that it's angling down so that when you release it it starts drifting ever so slightly until it uh, until it until it straightens up and now we have just the the nice safe little uh, safe little descent also there's a slightly peculiar graphical glitch going on once you once you've reloaded the quick save it's like the little uh, the little uh, heat shield the the thing that connects it to that protective shell base doesn't show up when you've uh, when you've reloaded the. I don't know if that has something. To, I, I imagine it's still there. It's just not being shown graphically. I'm wondering perhaps that's like to do with the way the thing falls. Not sure. Um, either way, it's uh, it, it looks. We've got slightly magic, uh, slightly magic uh, space lander, but that's okay. We're doing crazy stuff as it is, so I, I will forgive that little bit. This time we are down nice and safely. The car is uh, fallen uh, further away, but not to a too greater a distance, and Valentina will get her, her 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 driving mission after slightly falling over and getting confused by the floor. I don't... <laughs> The, the floor just attacked her. Uh, yeah, I'm using Valentina for this because, well, she was the one that got the vehicles to the moon and that drove around on there with the uh, Space Bright, so she's the most experienced with this car. Figured I would uh, would use her. Jumping here and trying to run and jump doesn't end well, particularly. The jetpack's useless. The gravity's too strong. It doesn't it doesn't really do anything. It's great fun whizzing around with that on the moon, but... Uh, <laughs> Here, it's is absolutely is absolutely uh, useless. Now, when it came when it came to uh, getting the vehicle, I completely forgot what I said earlier about having to get in the right side, and was so excited I just sort of jumped at anything and <laughs> probably realised that was a silly idea. Very nearly snapped the solar panel off that time round, which uh, would not would not have been good. Just running into it and breaking it, not really what you what you want to uh, to be doing. Now, just a case of uh, mash the buttons and hope you're eventually getting in the car. It may have fallen over a, a few times. The, the <laughs> The Kerbals get a little bit abused out here. And there we go. We have got her in the car. Uh, release the brakes. Again, it's, it's it's not working. And that's when I check about the elec electricity and realise that the, the length of the journey... Because the, the previous tests or whatever that I'd that I'd done, I never had a problem with electricity because I'd never had to spend quite so long uh, positioning the manoeuvres. Uh, so, yeah, when the uh, when the car, unless it drains all the electricity coming through the atmosphere, which I assume it wouldn't do, um, yeah, the car was on the uh, on the planet safely. So I left it around for a little while to uh, recharge the batteries so I could go for a drive. I was just double-checking that there wasn't something I'd missed for retracting the solar panels. If there is a way, I don't know what it is. So <laughs> there, there may well be. I, I 
I don't know, which means that I've got one full charge of battery to now try and get this car to fall over. I was also curious, since I was here, might as well see how quickly I can get the vehicle. As long as I did realise as well with this is that if the solar panels are sort of in, in the flat position, I can actually still drive the car around a little bit, is if they go, uh, they're adjusting to find the, the correct position, is that when, once they start going to the more, the more vertical, that's when they fall, which is accurate for how aerodynamics would work. Uh, so yeah, the solar panels are gone on the vehicle. Now it is just a case of see how fast we can get. Can we roll it? And uh, just to enjoy the, the bizarre sight of uh, driving cockpit view in a vehicle uh, on a purple planet. It's very cool, I have to say. Um, yeah, <laughs> we ended up, we already got, got some decent speed out of it actually to begin with, sort of 23, 23 meters a second. I was trying to find some hills so that we could go down. Now, as I mentioned as well, the gravity is greater on this uh, on this planet as we now start picking up a little bit of speed. So while rolling this car on Earth is very easy and rolling it on the moon is incredibly easy, rolling it here, not so much because you've got to be going very quickly if you want it to tip over. You can see here I was wiggling around the steering and it wasn't really, it wasn't even thinking, potentially looking at going up on two wheels, whereas on Earth it'll do that very, very easily. I was sort of aiming for the big mountain range ahead of me, but uh, it's often that thing when there's sort of vast expanses ahead of you, you kind of uh, misjudge the distance and there wasn't a hope in hell. I was going to make it far enough. I was thinking if I could get across it and get down the other side, or if I could just get halfway up it and then run down it we could use the speed to try and roll the car you can see here wiggling around 18 20 meters a second that would put the car on its roof on earth isn't doing anything here which is a slight concern as i'm watching the the battery tick down i'm on a rather limited time frame for getting this car to uh, <laughs> to go upside down i was trying to find a hill just something around here that i could use to uh, to gain a little bit more speed sort of all the train being purple kind of hard to identify a hill we've got a bit of one going on here so I, I, I get it to, to gather up some speed we do get some half decent speed out of the car but uh, as soon as I turn the steering it's, it's not having any of it it's not going quick enough to uh, overcome the the gravity of the planet while it's not a very well designed car stability wise it's great for what I want it to be doing and falling over. It's uh, not. It's, it's a lot more stable uh, on this planet. Uh, while the battery is still continuing to, uh, to tick down, I see my opportunity. We're kind of coming up towards uh, a fairly sizable crater here. So I just floor it down here and hope that we can pick up enough speed. About 20, I think it's about 28 meters a second. New, new speed record for this car as well. Like I just turn it in and it's just enough it gets the car up on two wheels the front wheel digs in and the space sprite is on its roof that's gonna have to do for uh, <laughs> for getting this getting this vehicle to roll uh, on this planet not only are we now stuck because there's no way to flip it back over again it's pretty much out of battery but we did it as uh <laughs> Valentina slightly face plants it climbing out of the car and then trips over a little bit. Uh, the, the the space sprite has been successfully rolled on Eve. It was a surprisingly uh, successful voyage, I, I have to say. Uh, we actually had plenty of fuel left over to get to get the vehicle here. Once we got here, once I'd remembered to charge it up, I'm quite annoyed because the first time it, it would have been fine had I remembered to check the electricity. But uh, once we did get here got the car charged up, we got a new speed record out of it, and we managed to put it on its roof. So, a successful mission all round, except for the poor Kerbals that are kind of stuck here now. But uh, I can't do much about that. Sorry guys, but you rolled a car on a different planet, you're the first people to do that. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Anyway, that is it uh, for this uh, challenge, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.